Welcome to this video. When you were using damage mechanics for metals, you probably encountered with stress triaxiality dependence of the damage behavior. This video gives you all necessary information about stress triaxiality including its definition, its concept and importance in damage mechanics, and how to measure its effect by experiments. In the next videos of this playlist, we describe how to predict stress triaxiality in a test by Abacus software. Stress triaxiality is defined by this formula, where P is the hydrostatic stress. Consider all the components of stress tensor. P is defined as the trace of this tensor or some of the diagonal components. Sigma E is the effective misses stress. We can use this formula to calculate it using deviatoric stress tensor. This product on two tensors is called double contracted product and means that multiply two tensors component by component and sum the terms. In other words, this product contains summation of nine terms. The deviatoric stress tensor can be calculated as follows. The effective stress based on the stress components in the most general form is calculated by this formula. If you need more details about effective misses stress in various stress states, or if you are interested to find out derivations of these formulas, please watch our video about plasticity. Now let's investigate that what is the meaning of stress triaxiality formula. Stress triaxiality is the ratio between hydrostatic and deviatoric stress. So, it can often be used to predict the type of fracture which is ductile or brittle. Dominant hydrostatic stress rather than deviatoric stress promotes brittle cleavage fracture, as well as dimple formation. Dominant deviatoric stress corresponds with shear slit and therefore larger ductility. A higher stress triaxiality corresponds to a stress state which is primarily hydrostatic rather than deviatoric, so promotes brittle fracture. Low stress triaxiality corresponds with dominant deviatoric stress, so promotes shear slip and therefore larger ductility. To evaluate the effect of stress triaxiality on damage behavior, its effect on the fracture strain is investigated. Fracture strain is representative of ductility of a material. What is the relationship between fracture strain and stress triaxiality? At first, let's define fracture strain. The fracture strain is defined from the reduction of cross-sectional area measured on broken samples. In this formula, A, 0, is the initial cross-sectional area, and A, F is the final cross-sectional area of the broken sample. The most important macroscopic observation about ductal fracture is, the fracture strain decays exponentially with increasing stress triaxiality. This effect is directly related to a significant increase of the void growth rate with increasing stress triaxiality. The most common questions about stress triaxiality are how to know its value, and how to measure dependency of the fracture strain to it. At first, we explain values of stress triaxiality in various common tests. Then we explain how to measure dependency of the fracture strain to it. The first test is pure shear test. In this test, stress tensor is in this form. Therefore, the hydrostatic stress is zero. Consequently, the stress triaxiality is also zero. Usually, results of single tension tests is available for materials. Under single tension test the stress tensor is, now calculate the hydrostatic stress and equivalent misses stress from the stress tensor. 
Then using these two values, stress triaxiality is 1 divided by 3. Note that, in a single tension specimen, stress triaxiality is equal to this value up to the onset of necking, and then steadily increases inside the neck with increasing plastic deformation. For plain strain tension, the stress tensor is in the following form. We can calculate the hydrostatic pressure, and then deviatoric stress tensor. We know that the normal strain is zero among the third direction, therefore, based on the flow rule of the Misses plasticity, the related deviatoric stress component should also be zero, so we can conclude that. Now we rewrite the hydrostatic pressure and calculate the equivalent Misses stress. Finally, stress triaxiality is In pure hydrostatic tension, the stress tensor is, so the deviatoric stress tensor is zero, and consequently the equivalent misses stress is zero, so the stress triaxiality is infinite. What about the pure hydrostatic compression? The mentioned tests up to now, can be used to measure fracture strain in some values of stress triaxiality, but in practice only fracture strain values of single tension tests are available. As you will find out the details in continue, the cylindrical notched round bar geometry is the best suited test to study ductal fracture and its relationship with triaxiality. In the center of the minimum cross section of a notched round bar, Stress triaxiality can varies in a large range based on the geometry. This test has significant advantages. First, it allows probing a wide range of stress triaxiality by changing the radius of curvature of the notch. Second, the stress triaxiality remains relatively constant all over the deformation process in the center of the minimum cross section. Please note that, Finite element simulations are necessary to accurately evaluate the stress triaxiality, as will be explained in next videos. It is noteworthy that, a standard procedure to test cylindrical notched round bars and interpret the results, has been developed by the European Structural Integrity Society. At last it is important to mention that measuring the relationship between fracture strain and stress triaxiality for your specific material, needs some remarkable experimental efforts. Thank you for watching this video. If this video was helpful, please let us know by comments or like. Please subscribe to our channel for more videos about concepts of advanced mechanics and simulations.